Hello Rabauken and welcome to this video, this long-term AD200 review. I had it for three and a half years in use. So, and I have to give you a disclaimer, so I purchased that via Amazon since uh, that time there were no other retailers, so I had to uh, purchase it via Amazon. I've got no clue what this flash went through concerning transport, etc. And uh, this video is not sponsored by anybody, so the affiliate links in the description are for the channel support only, to help me reaching my target and my goal to be able to uh, pump out more videos. Yes, I'm a professional photographer and since this is a longer video, pump up your attention span from minutes to seconds and now let's go right after the intro. So what the flash went through, <coughs> sorry, I used it for three and a half years and I did a calculation over all the projects uh, I, I shot with it and I've, it fired about 50,000 to 60,000 flashes and uh, at 90% of the time using the bulb. Power settings I'm using the most are between 1 over 16 and 1 over 8 plus 0 0.7 and uh, most of the time I'm using the flash or I have been using the flash indoors and on location mainly for business headshots and portraits. Uh, I very rarely take it outside and uh, HSS I just tested and not used at all uh, due to the, the quick overheating and it goes into a kind of safety pause and sleep mode which I really don't like so I'm, I'm using NDs and uh, shooting it at standard mode basically. Um, the flash has been packed and unpacked all the time very often. The Fresnel head, this one, um, I, I nearly I just used maybe for five times uh, because right afterwards the round head came out. So this one, yeah. so put it into camera, yeah. And um, so with the the Fresnel head and the SKR1 uh, modifier set, I I used it for backdrop lighting pretty often and sometimes with with gels. Okay and uh, some other Godox grids, basically. Um, the batteries have been charged between once or twice per week, uh, sometimes with pauses of about three weeks in between, and they are still working fine. The accessory I used um, are the round head, uh, the AKR1 um, set of modifiers, gels for the AKR1, so the included ones and some additional ones, the S7 foldable beauty dish, uh, which, which is okay, but I really don't like it uh, simply because of the reason the disc that comes with it is not um, easy to pack. There's no pouch uh, for, for the discs, you, you forget it all the time, so I, I don't like this one. And um, I also use the, the dual head, the B2, it's also working very fine, uh, I like it. And um, the S2 bracket I'm using on a, on a regular basis uh, with the flash. Uh, and I really like it because it takes the complete load uh, of the flash because the, the modifier is, is sitting on top of the bracket too. Uh, and then I, I use it with all kind of modifiers. So small 80 by 80 soft boxes, 150 by 30 centimeters strip boxes, beauty dishes, 180 centimeters umbrellas. Um, and, and 120 centimeters octa boxes, deep octa boxes, uh, wide flat octa boxes, etc. etc. So that's what I use the flash for, that's what it went through. Uh, I've got two of these. And um, the, the next point would be I was, would like to talk about is the all uh, the, the performance overall and reliability and battery life. So at the beginning, I was really afraid that this switch might fail soon because it's doesn't look or doesn't feel uh, that good of a quality but it's still working fine and um, the flashes both are firing with the initial bulbs so I don't have any issues with that. The battery life is really tremendous. Um, it's very hard to drain them and uh, larger shoots I did with it at, at the power settings I was referring to I always could t get 800 to 1200 image, uh, images or photos out of one battery charge and I never drained them. So I really never drained them. Um, but I wasn't using any modeling light. So if you switch on the modeling light, which for example, the, the round head is offering, uh, it will drain the battery quite quite fa faster, okay. 
Um, so as I said, I charge them about once to twice a week uh, or once every fortnight uh, over three and a half years and um, sometimes with pauses of three weeks, especially during the pandemic lockdowns, etc. But they are still reliable, working very reliable. The flesh itself has got some nasty behaviors like every 1000 flashes. Uh, it's doing double flashes, multi flashes like drrt. sometimes it's, it's beeping. Uh, that's happens as said every thousand flashes for example but nothing else uh, went wrong or went wrong and um, the what I really like about it it's the the output range which goes from very low of 1 over 128 to, to full power and the uh, recycle time is really really uh, fine it just starts to slow down at 1 over 7 uh, at least from my personal perception and style of shooting, uh, I try to also for the recycle time uh, reasons uh, uh, try to stay below uh, 1 over 4 basically. The 200 watt seconds is a good compromise um, and it's for me it's very important to being able to power down because I like to do um, dark sets with low ISO and um, small apertures plus grids etc etc etc. So um, it's, in this case it's also very important uh, to be able to, to power the flash down so otherwise it's, it's being too, too bright. And um, if there's a, a lot of ambient light and uh, you have to uh, get your ISO very very low and you need this extra strength 200 watt seconds and from my experience for the most cases is really really enough. And um, the key advantages from, from my perspective, the really plus, plus, plus number one feature of this flash is the versatility. Okay, so it's, it's very small in size. Uh, you can pack it uh, very good. Um, the pouch that comes with it is very nice. You've got all these uh, accessories. So it's a studio flash in this setup uh, in one second and in the other second it becomes uh, a, a background flash or kind of speed light with the Fresnel heads etc and the AKR1 modifier set so um, I really really like it so I created my own little flash case for all my flashes as you can see uh, see here in the uh, in the, the video uh, so I put in the, the two 8200s and two additional speed lights and it's it's really really great what I really love about it so I'm in studio I really don't like any cords uh, power cords and um, once you start using battery driven flashes I think I think you, you, you never want to lose it anymore right and um, also a key feature is this this that you can slow down or the, dial down the power to 1 over 128 as I said before uh, which is true for basically all Godox uh, battery driven flashes so you can dial them all down to 1 over 128 at least and at, at least the one uh, the 8600 Pro which I also own uh, it goes even down to 1 over 256 I'm not uh, aware of the other ones and uh, they are really very very important if you want to do dark moody sets with a shadow depth of field and this is in, uh, in fact often forgotten so the proprietary mount which is this ring basically okay so this is part of the mount so you can put in some uh, items you're getting with the proprietary mount I'm, I'm not a big fan of because it's just the 8200 and uh, an older flash I forgot the name of and uh, I really love the the s2 bracket um, it's got a Bowens mount takes really the weight away from from the flash and uh, it's it's really great so I'm I'm using it all the time and you also have to make sure that you're getting the the s2 bracket and not the the s bracket because the s bracket was really a pain in the beep um, to get the flash into it was working but it was really hard work to get it in the battery drive is great just be aware of um, not using LED when you're um, using it basically as, as modeling lamp so how does the 8200 compare to the 8600 which I own the V1 which I own and the TT685 speedlight so the 8600 Pro is of course more powerful uh, but much bulkier mm. and heavier for transport so when you need this extra power it's it's fine uh, the V1 it's like a weaker 8200 because it has got the the same round head mount the magnetic mount 
where you can attach the modifiers to. Um, and it's, it's, it's also fine just in, in very large strip boxes. Um, it, it loses a lot compared to the 8200 because I think the V1 is about 70 watt seconds and the 8200 is about uh, 200 watt seconds. Uh, that's where the name is coming from. The TT6 at 5 is capable of substituting the 8200 um, in small to mid size soft boxes. So, for example, in the Godox 80 by 80 centimeter soft box, the foldable one uh, I own, uh, the 8200 with the omnidirectional bulb, so this one, if I use it at 1 over 16 plus 03 of power, um, the TT685 in the same soft box uh, has to be set about 1 over 8. Of power, but be aware that the uh, the Fresnel head of the TT6 at 5 is really flashing directly into the um, diffusion cloth compared to the 8600 with this um, bulb um, is, is, is flashing everywhere, so it's omnidirectional, so the, the light pattern might be a little bit different. Um, the main differentiator besides uh, the power cord um, is the power range, um, which is one over 200, 128 to, to full power, mostly available only in the more expensive strobes. So what I mean is that uh, the power cord based flashes you are getting from, from Godox, the cheap ones, uh, you can't dial them down. So like for, the, for example, the SK402, you can only dial it down to 1 over 16, which is in most cases much too strong if you want to do um, moody sets. So that's really a um, differentiator using the, the battery based stuff and the 8200. So to summarize it, um, I haven't got really anything very negative to say about the 8200. Just one thing and <laughs> sorry Godox, but for me it's really, it's the most ugly flash I own, but also the most versatile flash I own. And uh, all the other Pro flashes of, of Godox, like the 80, uh, 300 Pro, 400 Pro, 600 Pro, and also now the, the newer 80, 100 Pros, they are much more sexy in design. Okay, so, but that's really the only negative I have to, to uh, talk about. It's very reliable, very handy accessories, and uh, huge battery life. So, from my perspective, it's the, the best choice, choice to start. Um, studio photography with and also if you have got a, a mixture like between on location jobs and you, you're moving a lot around so you're getting everything with one flash so it can be a studio strobe uh, on on, uh, on one hand and then you can do the all the, the backdrop e illumination with the SKR1 um, set of modifiers etc etc so it's basically a no-brainer uh, so because just the price is around 350 euros um, plus minus something and uh, is really great. So I also would prefer the 8200 above the the other 80 models if I haven't wouldn't have any uh, of them, just because they're it's 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 so flexible. So you're getting a lot of flashes in, in one flash basically. So check out your needs as a photographer and decide if if you uh, want to purchase it if if that's the correct or the right flash for you. So it's the standard model, not the pro model. The difference are not that. Great, so I think it's it's also good review for the 8200 Pro. Okay, that's it guys. I hope you liked it. So if you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. I'm really trying to reach these 1000 subscribers to get this channel going and to be able to pump out more videos quicker. And uh, for sure, I'm really happy about any comments yeah, and any feedback, so put it into the comments. And um, that's it for me. And as always, never forget to listen to more heavy metal.